a lot of people think they have seen the spiritual world, but the truth is very few people have. Not many people, their eyes have been opened spiritually. And you will notice in scripture, whenever somebody's eyes were opened, he will tell you, and the Lord opened my eyes. Because your spirit also has eyes, just like your physical body has eyes. Amen. But we have eyes of the spirit which are not internal, but they are used to see things outside of yourself into the world of spirits. And when I speak about worlds of spirits, I'm speaking about both the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of light, heaven, and the spiritual world in general. Now, even, demo, even devil worshippers, wizards, and witches have glimpses of the spiritual world, not in its entirety, not in its fullness, it is impossible because they do not bear light. But because they have a spirit, they have found a way to activate their spirit man in order to see spiritually. So if you meet an advanced witch or wizard, they may know some things, but they cannot alter anything. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, they will see some things. An example is... The magicians that were with uh, Herod, they knew a king was being born. They didn't know if it was a physical king or a spiritual king. Nevertheless, they knew a king was coming in. And they knew that he would be born around this time. They knew he should be no more than two years old. And we need to kill him before he takes over. The same thing happened in Egypt. Before Moses was born, they knew that a great deliverer and a great leader was born among them. And this one was not born among the Egyptians, he was born among the Jews. So every Jew that has a child under two years old, we need to kill all those babies because we don't know which one it is. So the wisdom was God hid Moses among the Egyptians and they could not find him. I, I feel like I'm speaking to myself. Nevertheless, they could see, they could see into the spiritual realm, but not in its entirety because the spiritual realm is too big. In fact, the right term is world of spirits. That is the correct term, world of spirits, because it is vast in dimensions and in width and in realms and dimension. That's why it's called world of spirits. Uh, the biggest mistake that Christians in general we have we don't prepare ourselves for the world of spirits whether you like it or not one day you will go there every day you come to church every day you pray every day you walk with god you are preparing yourself for your debut in the world of spirits because that's where we are all going so whether you like it or not, that's why you need to learn these things. Because one day you will leave this world. Ah, oh, yes, 100%. Whether by rapture or whether by death, the fact is we will leave this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I feel like when I say these things, people panic. <laughs> it gets quiet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People start looking at me strange like, huh? I shall not die. I shall live. <laughs> So, you have spiritual eyes that have spiritual sight. But we also have visions of the spirit. So the spirit man, even though he has eyes that permits him to see spiritually, but the spirit man also has spiritual visions. I wish somebody could understand what I'm saying. The inner man can also see his own visions. And these visions are not external, but within the spirit of man. Is this making sense of yes. us? Then we have the soul. I've just cut down so that we can move fast and learn and, and move to places. The soul also exists in the soulish realm. Like I always say and you may not know this, but some who have been listening to me for a long time, you understand this. Your soul actually lives in another world. There is the soulish realm. 
the spiritual realm, the soulish realm, and the physical realm are different. But all this exists in the spiritual realm. Right now, you are active in the spiritual realm, but you are just active inside of a body. Because this world and this universe as we know it is being sustained by something we cannot see. That is why you get out of the earth. You will see the earth hanging on nothing, but it doesn't make sense. How is it just floating? But you read uh, uh, the book of Job and many other uh, books in the scriptures. It says, uh, who knows where the foundations of the earth are fastened? Uh, the Bible says God rests his foot on the circle of the earth. They knew the earth was round. How it is round, they don't know. Why it is floating, we don't know. It is just somewhere in space. But those who are spiritual have seen their pillars holding the earth. So good. Teaching good, prophet. <laughs> that is why the Bible always says Jesus is the chief cornerstone. It's trying to tell you there is construction that your eyes can't see. Amen. Are you understanding this? So in the soul, the soul also lives in its own realm. It lives in its own world. Now the soul is very different from the spirit. But when you are still maturing as a Christian, I won't say baby Christian because that's usually on the insulting side. You think you know, but you actually don't know. But the soul also lives in a world, but... The difference between the soul and the spirit is so great. And they are not alike at all, even though both of them are immaterial. Because the soul also is spiritual, but it is just called a different name because it exists different from how the spirit exists. Just like your body exists differently from your soul and your soul from your spirit they are all different, but they are all nevertheless spiritual. This is why uh, the day of the great resurrection, your body will be raised up again. What is the point of it if it is useless? No, your body is also spiritual. Because those things which are made were made from things which are not seen. So this material earth is actually spiritual because its substance is spiritual. It is just materialized physically. I feel like I'm teaching too much. But I'm trying to bring you somewhere. So never think you're not spiritual. That is actually a lie. You are just not aware of your spiritual nature. Is this making sense so far? Yes. So the soul also is separate from the spirit and the soul's ways are different from the spirit's ways. But when you are mature and growing spiritually, you cannot make a distinction between your soul and your spirit. That is why the Bible says it like this. The word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. In separating soul from spirit, part of spiritual maturity is not that you are so intelligent. It is not that you can pray, but spiritual maturity and, and what proves that the word of God has entered you is the ability to actually distinguish between the soul and the spirit. Because a Christian who cannot tell what is the soul, what is the spirit, will always be confused about what God wants, where God wants them to be, where God wants them to go. Amen. Why? Jesus, because sir. the heart is deceitful. Above all things, if you don't know how to separate, your own soul will deceive you. Wow. Not the devil. Your own soul. Are we going somewhere? Yes. yes. 